Oh, by the way, for this one, uh, as usually, we are, we, I could not find the slides for it, and neither I, I thought of uh, any necessity for the slides to go over the this chapter, which is very small and a little bit of a more of a basics. And uh, sorry, uh, you. Uh, uh, how do you how do you go with Olu or Odell? Oluwa Femi, yeah, Oluwa Femi. Okay, Olu Femi. Okay, you can pitch in. Uh, I have a couple of issues today uh, for sharing. I'm trying. You can see my screen, right? It is so slow. As yes. it, I just changed the internet service from my side, and we're still experimenting on uh, the the speed and all that stuff. So just in case, uh, if, if it's really slow, just let me know. And okay. I am trying to use the the R4DS book, uh, book itself to go over the slides and, you know, maybe you can help me out if at all, uh, if I miss anything or if I'm not clear on any of the topics, okay? And uh, this topic, which I feel, I feel that it is just my personal feeling that this topic should have been one of the first chapters where uh, you know like this is uh, this is actually uh, where you start creating and creating the scripts and you know having a little bit of a knowledge at the earlier would be better but that's okay i mean it's it's up to the author that he had he had some set of mind uh, in how to put the stuff in a linear order of here so but uh, to start with scripts and projects, I really uh, just uh, two cents. I mean, like most of you guys would have already read about this one, but I just want to touch base upon uh, the projects where we uh, uh, is using the projects rather than just uh, creating the RMD files or R files and put it in a location in, in a desktop or that would is not the organized way of doing or getting the things ready within the art studio so using projects would make the life a lot easier uh, when you want to really get back uh, get uh, when you get back after you close it in between or you're working on something and you want to get back of later on maybe today or uh, one week later or you know 15 days later it would uh, the rds file or the project file our project file would be a lot easier and very very organized and uh, i i i when i started using it it is really good and much better than uh, without using the art projects so that's my two cents uh, for when i started using it and uh, uh, we'll we'll go one at a time. Uh, scripts. Uh, uh, so the scripts is basically uh, my uh, my understanding of our scripts is anything uh, uh, I uh, see uh, when you open um, when you open an R Studio or uh, the base base R session will be having these four windows, right? Uh, one is uh, the editor window, the console, the plots and files. This is a general window. And I think most of you guys are already uh, familiar with the window, uh, this uh, window style. Uh, when you put anything in the console and you, you check for those core pieces of code, it would, uh, the, it would stay in that session until that three lines or four lines have been run, you see the output and you get done. But when you want to come back tomorrow and uh, check what you did in that prison, why it won't stay there because you did not save it, right? So you 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 did not, you, you, it's just running in a, in a, uh, in a, in a, in a, in a temporary session. You, you, it does not have a save this. So when you put it in the untitled uh, editor, give it a name and save it in a location, that's when it becomes kind of an R script uh, with the extension dot R. So for example, uh, in this uh, in this example, you, you have a library 
G, uh, ggplot uh, ggplot and uh, having uh, you know uh, small uh, plot uh, pl uh, you plotted uh, using uh, ggplot right so what happens is that when you save this one it would automatically take an extension dot r and save it at a location either on your windows people if it is on windows c drive or you know wherever you give the location of your program it would go and save there and that's when it becomes a script r script and when you come back tomorrow it should be able to run just by clicking it and opening it up it opens in an editor again and running it and it would give you the same result so that's that's a principal way of understanding what a script is so uh, he said that you know either you can open a new uh, new script video uh, window either by uh, saying control shift n or you can go onto the top and click on it I, I, let me i mean i can i will open the r studio and we'll go later on into that but that's that's how you open a new window and get it done and uh, running the piece of code as i was uh, talking earlier uh, the uh, R script uh, editor here. You can check. Uh, you can check everything in R line by line by selecting. Uh, uh, you uh, say, for example, you have these pieces of uh, code here. Say after the li library ggplot, when you click enter uh, uh, on, I'm a Windows guy, so I always say Control. Uh, enter would give you uh, the library ggplot uh, whatever you is doing it and if you are on mac i believe it is cmd enter uh, i i don't know about mac because i never used it sorry so uh, i believe that's right so when when you go to the end of the line whatever pieces of code that you want to run just place your place your cursor at the end of it and say command enter uh, CMD enter so that's exactly it would run that piece of code or if you want enter the entire entire piece of code you can either select everything and say uh, click uh, command and control enter or you can say control shift uh, enter you know that that's there are a couple of ways of running it so uh, here you know the author goes on saying that you have entered this piece of code in the console and you ran it, right? So what happens is that it gives you the result right away and tell, uh, tells you the result of what's happening. And uh, see, uh, the, if you want to run the whole entire code, it says Control Shift Enter. S. Yes, sorry. Doing so, this regularly will give a great way of uh, what you have captured. So you you run this piece of code and you done it with it but you cannot uh, you are not saving it meaning that this is not an r script so it's just for like like if as if you are using r as a calculator meaning that you uh, you just type in your calculations what you need and you erase it and it's gone out of the memory and you cannot come back and see what you did but uh, when you start putting it in the uh, uh, editor and trying to save it you would be able to come back and use it okay and then uh, these are the some uh, little uh, little nice things that what uh, the enhance or some I should not say enhance editor but our studio editor my bad I come from SAS, uh, SAS world so I'm always SAS is behind my mind you know, when I say enhance editor or editor or all that stuff so it's a uh, uh, R Studio editor, R script editor, where uh, when you say, for example, here I am doing an assignment operator for X and Y, and you are assigning uh, 10 to uh, uh, X, X, Y, and 10, right? So I myself am not clear whether this is is this assignment for X or is it for Y, and when you when you do something like this. The R enhanced, I mean the R editor. Were, uh, I I didn't see this in the R actual editor, but R Studio does this one, right? Uh, have you tried this one in R base R and you see this kind of uh, neat and uh, 
the good ways of uh, explaining the user who is not familiar with it uh, no right no good so yeah we do not we do not see it in the base uh, uh, r the native r editor but when you start using the r studio uh, which is uh, ide meaning that it is uh, much does enhanced features than the actual r editor so these are the some things uh, to find out or to use any of these things you need to have an r studio installed on the top of the r that you already did so that's that's for a different uh, maybe if you are not if you are not done that maybe you have to go back and uh, see check it out and install those two things and that's when you find all this stuff here in this chapter so xy uh, when uh, is 10 so it is going to give us uh, a stop sign or a red, uh, x window you know red window showing saying that there is unexpected token of y uh, and assignment operator so meaning that this is not this is going to give you an error when you run it and also the will let you know the potential problems is, is right you know like r studio will let you know the this thing is uh, double, when you when you do uh, something like this it will say is any check an expression so these are some kind of uh, uh, and I, I mean editor you know editor is going to prompt you whenever it is an error or whenever it is logically not right or uh, there is a trace back option when you are doing it in function so there's a lot of stuff that you can use within the r studio when you are uh, when you are logically or uh, uh, syntax wise is wrong you know when you're when you're writing a program and your syntax is wrong or you're logically wrong it is trying to give you uh, some hints of where of what's happening is wrong you know that's a that's a thing that is trying to do in the r script and saving and naming okay uh saving uh, uh, <clears throat> r studio does uh, automatically save the entire uh, project for you uh, when you're trying i mean auto save when you, the auto save is option is on it is trying to get save it at a location uh, the r project you know r project is automatically saved and uh, without assigning giving a name of uh, it would say untitled one two three instead of uh, as i said here you know uh, but uh, this untitled one untitled two untitled three may does not make any sense for us right i mean you have to keep opening it up all untitled one untitled two untitled three and you know maybe there are chances that you have opened up untitled one and you have opened up new session you know cleaning it up and untitled one might be overwritten so there are a lot of things so it's better to always open a script and give it a proper name so what have what is a proper name you know is that uh, unlike uh, in unlike in some of the other languages there is no uh, limitation of num uh, how you can name it uh, you know it can be really long name uh, but there are some limitations where when you, uh, end of it uh, i had this when i was trying to do it when the end of that when you say dot small r instead of dot big r if you say small r it, it may not be able to read I mean, when you when you try to read it back, it may not be able to read it. The R Studio or neither R uh, can be able to open it. So the uh, dot big R should be. I mean, the capitalized R should be there. And also, with the same thing happens with dot RMD. The R should be capital letter and MD should be capital uh, slow, uh, lower. If you try to do this uh, big RMD, uh, it would it wouldn't be able to open it up. So that's uh, because it is a case sensitive. Uh, meaning that whatever uh, you know upper case and lower case they are two different ways of handling it and other way other things are i think you know you cannot have uh, our program with starting with underscore that is i think you know maybe uh, did anybody try that one uh, having a program with underscore in front of the actual program no right i mean i, I don't think uh, r would let you to have underscore in front of it but it it would allow you sorry, sorry. sorry? uh 
maybe yeah I, I lost you sir but yeah underscores it won't let you in but you can have uh, you know uh, there are naming conventions where you can have upscales and underscores in between or you know uh, special characters i don't think so it would allow it a couple of things you know, there are a lot of rules and regulations a couple of rules and regulations not a lot of them uh, to have a naming convention okay we can we can talk about that so uh, so here it says avoid spaces symbols and special characters here for the uh, for the file name so it is it is going to do that and some people have a habit of saying uh, having spaces in between actual file names say for example adverse events uh, instead of saying adverse underscore events if you say adverse space events uh, it, uh, it would have a problem of reading it back. Uh, I've heard that is it two different names or I don't know. I mean, it is something that uh, problematic with opening it up and reading it back. So it's better to always have an underscore. And uh, uh, if you have a long name, connect it with long name. There's a snake case. There's a lot of rules. I mean, there are a lot of ways of doing it. And uh, I think we already had a discussion about that of naming conventions. So that's that's uh, you know that's a kind of uh, he has an examples here, all the kinds of uh, uh, examples. And I I once had a big problem in naming uh, a file has a temp dot r because see. Uh, temp is a file that actually has a Windows extension, which is also a Windows file, temp file. And if you have uh, a, a files which are with a similar or, you know, uh, have a same name has a Windows file or a file within the R, you know, keywords, then there could be a conflict of interest and sometimes it might not give you a right result or it might have some problem. So avoid using, uh, you know, conventional names or Windows conventional names or, you know, conventional names within the studio and all that stuff. So it would come with the practice, but mostly I would uh, myself, I made a habit of writing long names so that it is self explanatory and you do not, I mean, the, uh, the, the person who is taking your programs does not have to guess what this program is so it will i mean the this c the programs like run first meaning that you always run this program first so that other programs get activated or you know the data and all that stuff are activated and you know that that's a better way of it so he has uh, he has continued to uh, keep on saying that you know a report underscore you know report 2020 giving the date and time or date uh, date uh, the year, month, and date of what, when it is run, and all this stuff, we uh, make uh, life easier for the person who is taking over from you, or you know, person who is handling it later on, and all that stuff. So these are the things. This is a common sense approach, rather than having anything uh, uh, to do with the programming part or you know, the naming and all that stuff. And most of the time. Um, there are some uh, certain, um, uh, I mean, uh, in the clinical world, at least I can talk about is a, there is a certain way of naming the programs and they expect you to uh, use those conventions uh, uh, because uh, the person who's reviewing your programs or person who's taking it over would be able to identify uh, looking at the name of the program, you know, instead of opening it up, even before opening it up, say, for example, uh, uh, when it said report 20, uh, 2022, 30 and uh, month of March and uh, date is 20. So it is self explainable. So that is the reason why you use this approach of uh, having a good na uh, naming convention, uh, using a good naming convention, uh, which would be helpful. And uh, the other way of round of this approach of zero one uh, load data for the people of uh, people who are coming for the first time and looking at the YouTube video later on. Uh, uh, this approach is used because 
if you have uh, more than nine say 909 model approach okay there are nine models and then you went to the 10th one the 10 model approach so what happens is that when you uh, 11, 9, 10 11 12 so 21 so what happens is if you do not have a zero in front of it uh, when when you try to sort it or when you try to put it back uh, the 1 and 11 comes right next to each other it won't you know the the order in which you're supposed to you are looking at it might not be the one you see it. so the order could messed up so the, the best way to avoid that order is having 0 1 load data and 0 to load uh, explanatory analysis 0 3 0 4 and 0 9 and then later on so that's a that's a way of doing it or you can have figure 0, 1, 0, 2, until goes till 10 and 11. So this way also keeps the order of Windows order because Windows sorted by the character and character, I mean, you think it is a numerical, but inside they think it's a character values and it is way of sorting it. And that's the reason why they try to use this kind of convention, you know, 0, 1 and 0, 2. So that, that, that's the logic behind why they do it and it's better to use that kind of things okay and the projects okay the project I, i'll show you uh, the you know when i'm running it but uh, the project uh, uh, to explain it in r studio uh, r studio uh, this thing is and the base r is well in the uh, at least on the windows uh, windows side okay in the, in the windows side uh, this is a hypothetical scenario where you got a file you wrote a file and you you saved uh, you you created one you have done a lot of uh, this thing and well uh, you you want to put it at one location where tomorrow you come back and you know exactly where it is instead of putting it in my documents or on a wind uh, on a desktop or on you know some place where there are a lot of other documents not the ones not you're not working on the other the old ones or then uh, or you know all those things you do not want to mix everything at one place right so you want to have organized i mean organized way of looking at your documents so you put it at one location create a folder or create some kind of this thing you know uh, where you put that uh, you have whatever working file you are in that location right very similarly very very similarly so in R you know in R also you you, you have started working on a file today uh, say let's say for example you, you just started on working and getting data wrangling the first steps is to bring all the libraries that related and you know all that stuff so you, you you first thing is you do do you you data wrangle or you you read in all the data the new data are coming up then uh, after reading all the data you try to uh, uh, you try to put it in uh, uh, the next step is uh, try to data wrangle you know uh, put it in a, such a nice way you, you know either you mutate mutate or create new variables or something you know like whatever you needed for analysis you do that this and the next step is you you do the analysis you know whatever analysis then uh, the next step is to produce outputs you know uh, the either it is in a tf i mean tables or listings or whatever you're trying to do that's the second third one and then the fourth one is to generate uh, visualizations okay or the graphs so these are the four different uh, different steps that you take to analyze a raw data, right? So uh, these four steps, if you can put it in four different locations, it will be very helpful for you or the programmer who's coming next to you, uh, you know, picking up from you or, you know, a uh, lot of people, you know, the reproducibility or, you know, you do not have to say, for example, if the data changed. The only place you want to go back is at the first look at first folder or the first program where you see okay i am running this one you see any changes in there and then you run the whole thing you do not have to worry about the downstream or you know that stuff or you want to change only the graphs you do not have to go up you know you do not have to do all that stuff so the division of uh, actual program would help 
in organizing the staff. So for that, the projects comes into play. I mean, the, uh, the R project is uh, the reason for saying all that is the R project when you create it as a project, uh, it would allow you to have uh, create multiple folders and multiple programs and you know a couple of things where the organizing of the data would be very 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 uh, useful and also uh, there's some there's a package called here where in which it uh, within a project you know once you create a project you have a current working directory you put that project and then start using the here package which i found really helpful uh, where you can create uh, folders and structure and very organized. So that's 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 the beauty of uh, how, uh, using the projects, and it is highly highly encouraged uh, to use the projects rather than putting it in one location. Any questions till now? Anyone? Or uh, did you had any problems using the projects earlier? Or did you have any better way of uh, organizing the stuff other than the projects? Uh, for me, there is no better way of organizing. The project is the key way for us to work uh, because you can have multiple projects uh, working in our studio and you can open uh, those projects. I think a uh, keyboard shortcut is always a key because me, I always found the control shift, uh, the, the, the alt and tab key, which I can use to navigate between uh, different projects in which I am working on. I think that workflow uh, really helped me a lot uh, when working with, because I can have five different projects open at the same time. So once I hit my alt and tab, I can navigate between each of those projects and I work each and I come back to anyone. I think that workflow, learning keyboard shortcuts, is key when working in the house studio project that's yeah so true so very true using the keys and all that stuff and the other point that i want to add is well after you know once you get the hand sweat and you know when you're started really doing it all that stuff uh, say for example if you want to have a blog or if you want a book down or any any of those things uh, when you put it, I mean, they always try to uh, have that project, you know, the book down project where, uh, uh, you know, all the programs are in one one project and then they start able to access those links, those RMD files or Q, uh, the Corto files or QMD files, you know, whatever it is in, in one project, as a project it goes and when you upload it into Git, uh, so everything works inside a project very nicely. So even though even if it is a small project a small code or small small line of thing try get habituated of creating a project uh, that uh, initially i did not have that habit of doing it uh, which made me i, I lost a couple of a uh, couple of uh, you know i i wouldn't say it's a ma major uh, thing for me because i i was trying out uh, re uh, creating r files and all that stuff but I had a lot of havoc going back and forth, you know, finding it out. But the moment I started creating a project and getting it done and organizing, it was wonderful experience of getting it back. So projects is made the life a lot easier and it is really, really good. So I cannot insist more on that. So uh, it's now here it says, you know, like uh, use this package. I, I I just started uh, using this one, the use this package, which is really wonderful. And you think, I mean, I, I used to think, I used to think that uh, use this package is mostly used when you started creating your packages. And, uh, you know, uh, where uh, it will be, make your life a lot easier when you create an R package and uh, push it to either CRAN or GitHub, you know, wherever it is, but use this package also helps us out in the regular day-to-day -day life, uh, which I'm just trying to get hands on um, hands on it uh, for the day-to-day -day life. But uh, as the author said that, you know, you can have a lot of things, you know, lot, like a use blank slate, which cleans a lot of other 
other other things and it would help helpful for us all that stuff and one one need uh, this thing is for the people who just started or uh, you know people who are learning uh, the basic things and you are not experienced of course even for the experience or i mean when i say experience is like after six months of coding or one year of coding you i mean this is the thing that happened to me like i i used to have the r studio open get something done and then uh, save it and uh, it would save uh, the whole thing would get saved at one location and then you know when i reopen it the ones which you see or you are working on or the previous ones used to pop up so it is kind of it's kind of saying that you know okay that session has been stored somewhere and you are trying to get back that session back so and not only that not only that when you have lots of data you know the, when you, when you have lot of uh, area i mean I, I would say that temporary data or you know the the data that was been uh mutated or you know the environment file the r environment file they have data and all that stuff uh you you in the intermediate data not the final data when you read in and you try to do some kind of uh, changes to it and you know you you try to see the analysis and all that stuff right so those data is all at an environment level and you close it you you close it and then when you try to when you you open it after one week say one week and you try to rerun it and you you think that you are having a new session on when you're running it but behind the screens is that it actually might have chances of might have that the old data the, everything has been copied it over and because you are using the art projects you you're bringing it back the entire entire things back to back to the life and the things the data change the data update all those things might not be reflected in this one because of that the reason for being happening for that you know I, it happened to me because i i did that i had the new data come in i was thinking that the new data came out and you know still seeing the old ones i did not knew why it was i was trying to do all those things i wasted a couple of things then found out that you know when when you install when you install an r studio there are uh, i mean there are global options when you go to the global options th this picture you know you see the general your workspace here the r restore r data into workspace at startup is defaulted to yes meaning that there would be a uh, you know uh, uh, we, uh, uh, a right mark here this right mark what happens is that it stores everything at a, at a place including the data including the data also is also copied it over and when you are coming when you are in uh, when you are uh, uh, restoring the r session it restores along with the files along with the data that you are already working on meaning that it says that okay you you are you are starting at the same level that you were working on one week ago and same thing so uh, it helps initially for me it did help out saying that okay I, I i do not use it i don't use it on a regular basis because i for my work i use some other software but you know when i break, come back after one week oh my everything is there and using the same thing you know moving it up but uh, because you know the data is coming back always the old data i did not had any issues but when you really make your project bigger and you know you're really doing a ser re real serious business bringing you back the data also could be a problem and is a problem is a problem so uh, people i mean uh, everyone uh, the you who are starting it was advisable it is advised to take it out take it out the workspace do not restore it and say you know click this option of save the uh, workspace to our data on exit never so you never want to store the data you can you want to store the scripts you want to store the programs you want to store 
the other stuff, the history could be also okay, but not the R data. Am I clear on this one or any questions or anything that you want to add? Uh, do, do you want anything add uh, on this one, on this part of it? I think you are clear, you are clear. You are so well explained. Yeah, so you, you do not want to bring in the temp data. It is like, say, uh, to be more explicit, uh, it is like having those temp files in a browser. And you, when you open a browser, when you open a session, they have cookies, they have temp files, and they all those come and sit in that place, right? And so what happens is that you're filling in the new session, you're bringing the web browser afterwards, you, uh, at least on the Windows side, that history of that session is there and you do not have to retype all that stuff. It will bring in all those things which may or may not be right. So if a new person would come there and you know, if you have those temporary sessions on, he might see all the stuff, the old, old, uh, old person, the next, the previous person who did it, he can see all that. You do not want all that stuff uh, for the data, the R. So I would highly recommend to take it out and do it. And uh, especially with the R data, okay? And uh, for uh, the, where exactly this work, uh, the analysis live is, is the location where you give. It could be, uh, as uh, he's mentioned, is get WD uh, with this get working data. And it will let, you can actually pick and choose within uh, within the R Studio where you, you want to save your file. And working directory is nothing but a folder where you want to put all your stuff. Either it could be a script, say the data, or you know all your things are in that and it will be very helpful to use the projects, the project window, once you have created a project, it will, it will ask you to browse in the, once you do the browse thing, it will ask you to pro, give, send you to a location and then you can do it. So these are all straightforward. You, 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 you can see where you, uh, you can change your working directory and all that stuff. So that, uh, see, he has a very uh, nice R Studio picture here where, it exactly looks like this where new directory when you click on the new directory it would go to the that uh, you know you can browse to it existing directory if you have already a folder on the windows uh, you create the windows folder uh, the difference between a new directory and existing directory that at least i found out is i have this problem with the version control maybe somebody can help me out with that but uh, new directory is you can the r studio would create a directory for you when you click on this and if you do not have a directory in the windows side or on the mac side I, I, i'm not i'm not sure about the mac as i do not have it but on windows if you do not have it when you but defaulted uh, the default drive is my documents and if you say that okay you have created a new give it a new name the windows folder is created for you unlike if you have an existing directory meaning that you have already a folder in the windows windows uh, my my documents section my documents it would go and put all your files in that existing directory the version control is if you if you have a folder on the windows and it is having a git file or the github file which is already you know like you are creating using uh, you know respiratory uh, 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 and using the git desktop version of it and you have created one folder then it would try to access that file so uh, i uh, you know i'm not quite sure about this version control because i does not sometimes uh, access and it does not uh, work that better for me on the windows side uh, maybe I'm still working on it, but uh, if anyone, anyone has a suggestion of how to get that, uh, that would be highly appreciable. Have you had a problem with uh, this version control folder? No, right? Okay, maybe it's just my uh, Windows thing of uh, Windows getting it and all that stuff. So that's the, uh, the uh, see, uh, and here the next picture says that, you know, once you click on the new directory, these are all the options that you can, you know, as I was talking, right? You can have a 
got a book, got a website. You know, when you when you clearly mention that uh, 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 this this folder is good, this folder is good. So it would create all the related files or the needed files in that folder and you know make your life a lot easier. Uh, a lot easier and uh, this tilde sign you know in the on the windows side at least uh, uh, the tilde sign you see on the uh, in the leftmost corner that is nothing but current working directory oh sorry uh, on windows it is the documents and documents you know the default it's always default is documents where if you if you do not give it a path or if you do not click on browse and take it to a different location it is defaulted to documents so that's a fold that's a place where you see a folder created called r4ds so that's uh, that that's uh, one you know and also maybe you can use the created get repository right then and there you know using this option here i i try i tried and i was able to get it too so that's that's very easy makes the projects makes your life a lot easier and once the project is created you can copy, I mean, you can use uh, the this window of uh, here, the editor window, have that, and when you save it, it would automatically go into that folder and get saved automatically. You do not have to point it out anymore, or you do not have to really change, or you do not have to really think about where you're saved. It would automatically do all that stuff there. So, and uh, here, this is a, uh, I do have a little bit of time, right? I know I got, came in late. Hopefully you guys are okay that we can discuss this related to an absolute path. Sorry, I, I, I apologize for being late and I know having a lot of technical issues, but okay, the related to an absolute path, this way, eventually when, um, I started uh, programming uh, whenever uh, uh, you know started learning uh, R. You know I used to go and point it out uh, this this kind of way of telling you know uh, where my programs are. You know the way of having slashes, user slashes, user slash, hardly documents and you know R4Ds and all that stuff. Example, it could be anything, right? And it's like telling exactly where you are putting your program you know you do not have to guess when you read at that program i would go one folder by one folder on at least on windows go to users within that there's a subfolder called hardly and within that there's a documents folder within that there's an r4ds within the r4ds there is another r4ds and then there is a program called diamond.r okay this is the way it is going to be on windows so that is absolute, I mean, exact path, you know, that's where the program is going to sit. But the problem with that is when you, when I give my program or when I give this one or the, this, uh, this project, you know, when I start uh, and somebody else is going to take it over from me, okay, then the problem comes in is when he runs that, he has to have exact structure, exact the folder structure that I have, otherwise he cannot run it and it would throw up lots of errors. You know, it doesn't know, the R doesn't know where the program is. Meaning that if say, example, I, I, I'm taking over the Hadley's programs, then I should have users folder, then I should have a Hadley folder called, folder called Hadley, I should have, a, it has a documents in it, R4DS, then R4DS, then I can put that program diamonds.r in that folder and run it. Then only the diamonds.r, you know, that program, wherever it is using, I mean, looking at it, would work. That's not the way uh, the reproducibility works. So that's, that's what the, you know, the author is going, is trying to convince us is that never, never use the absolute path. So for that, you know, like uh, when you use the projects, when you use the projects, this using, I mean, the, pro, uh, the problem with using the absolute path would go away. Meaning that you have the projects done, you have the working directory, you have everything done, then you, you create the folders and you do it. 
and when you when the others are trying to use the projects it would help them not to re i mean once the project is there they can actually automatically can run it without having these paths on because it does a project so it is going to look at those different folders and different programs by itself so that's that i think you know i made myself clear on the problem of using the absolute path right so uh, and also this problem of using the absolute path can be overdone by using the here package i uh, that's a wonderful package where you do not have to create uh, the absolute i mean the folders and all that stuff for you I mean, it will create for you uh, you know using the here path and i use it often and i find it really helpful for creating that uh, any questions till uh, for the uh, relative path or all that stuff uh, no question for now i think i think even if you check this chat i think i have dropped some materials on the charts uh, the oh. year package and some other useful material that i found very useful like uh, what they forgot to teach you about R by Jeff yes uh-huh yes you are right uh, the tidy was blocked and yeah you you absolutely nailed it here is a package uh, i think you must have used it and uh, workflow versus script yes and um, that's what exactly this location you know uh, in the exercises you would I, I i do not have a twitter account so i could not try it out but if somebody has tried it i would uh, absolutely want to see uh, the i mean i i would maybe create myself and do it so, but here, this location, I, I tried, I did open it up. It has a very good way of saying, you know, why you want to use uh, the project versus and all that stuff, the IDE and all that stuff. So this is a nice place where you want to go and find out more about the white spaces and, you know, the having empty spaces end of the line and all that stuff. Sure. So that's uh, pretty much, I mean, it's a very short topic and uh, I, I, there's no slides for it, but uh, it's just that, you know, I, I always believe that this should be the one of the first chapters that uh, it has to be, I don't know, where is that meeting? Um, I think I lost it, but anyway. Uh, that's that's what I think, you know, uh, that's the end of the thing that I want to talk. Uh, do you have any questions or anything that we want to discuss today? Okay, I think uh, there is no question for now. So I want to really thank you very much uh, for, though I know you had some technical issue joining our site. I think okay. that we, the presentation was okay. We were able to learn a lot because uh, when working in R, the beauty is when we work within projects, I think it make our life easier because when me, I first started learning R, I used to just work on normal R scripts, but I used to have difficulty there specifying my absolute parts, uh, trying to locate parts. But I think when you are working within the project, I think those your part is re your absolute part re still remains uh, your part, and it makes uh, the workflow very easy. So, as we all know in the chat, I think I have posted in the chat. Uh, we are going for due to the daylight saving time issue, so we'll be having like two weeks break, in which uh, so we'll be resuming. That is November fourteen. Mm -hmm. We'll be looking at exploratory data analysis. I think that will be taken by. Christine Amuzie, though she is not uh, here today, but I'll get in touch uh, with her in the Slack. Oh, definitely. Sure. And um, one, I mean, one thing that you pointed it out is the absolute path. Uh, people do have a confusion about uh, the operating system too. So with these uh, windows, they have to have uh, this kind of uh, slashes and this kind of slashes. So the first thing is they complain is, Oh, this is not working <laughs> just because that the relative path you should not be using it. So, yes. Yes. 
Uh, thank you very much. If there is no any other question, I think I will meet. Uh, we'll go on break. So I will, and also I think uh, John the gig he posted today. There is a new update on the notes. I think they just added Quato to the yeah. side. So he he so. I, I went I went in there. Uh, it was mostly he has this Quato introduced here instead of RMD file. So yes. I, uh, it is a, it's a nice way of you know like he has basics and all that stuff and he created a nice looking file and all, not only that. Uh, the, everything you know, the R4DS basically has been updated with QMD files. The, yes. uh, yeah, it was previously the RMD files. So now, if you see the factors and all that stuff, you know, it's all been yes. and uh, it is nice to fork again. And you know, I think you know it would reflect automatically. But this is what yeah. you see the whole game QMD file. They just changed it to the Cotto. Yes, I think if you have the old version, you just need to use use this uh, PR, I think, match main. So it's going to update the notes automatically for you. If they use this, it's going yeah. to update the notes because the, the one in which I fork is QMD file. Yes. My own yeah. version is. Uh, that's what, yeah, you, you are right. So it, it, it updates automatically and it's nice to use it. So I think we'll meet uh, 14th of November. So we'll be looking at exploratory data analysis. So, so see you all there. See you guys. Okay. Thank you.